Hello again everyone, this is Graham Herbst, Community Forester with the Nebraska Forest Service. Today we're going to talk about stem girdling roots and some of the different options available in the nursery industry of containers that trees are grown in. Mature shade trees are one of the biggest environmental assets to communities and individual homes alike. And we're not very successful yet as a culture at getting trees to last that long. When most people go to a nursery, purchase a tree, and bring it home to plant, and pull it out of the pot and find a picture similar to the top left. Most people are really impressed by how many roots that they have and, and how healthy that must make the tree. In actuality, when a tree is pot bound like this, uh, you have roots that are going to circle around and continue to grow in that shape. As the root and the stem of the tree continue to get larger, eventually there will be cons some constriction that can cause a number of problems in the tree that will either make it slowly decline or sometimes even snap off right at the base. Planting your tree at the proper depth in the ground is important to minimizing the possibility of a stem girdling root developing on your tree. When they're too deep in the ground, they send roots up to the surface for that oxygen and those roots are not going to anchor the tree as well and they can develop into stem girdling roots down the road as they cluster around the trunk. Before even beginning to dig a hole for a tree, take it out of the container that it came home from the nursery in and start to pull away any soil that's up at the top until you find a distinct flare to the tree that'll denote where the trunk is beginning to transition to the roots. And that's what you want to have right at the ground level. This root flare will be more distinct in some trees than others and you may have to look closely for it. Putting too much mulch around the base of a tree is another way that stem girdling roots can develop. When you have a quantity of mulch that's more than three or four inches thick, sometimes small rains won't even be able to get all the way to the soil, and so the trees will grow roots into the mulch in order to get the moisture where it is. These roots, in turn, can cluster around the trunk of the tree as well, and as they thicken, uh, begin to constrict the movement of moisture up and down the tree the way a stem girdling root will. As you see in this diagram, a two to four inch layer of mulch is plenty. It doesn't need to be up against the trunk of the tree itself. We want to have a nice wide layer of mulch as opposed to one that's really deep. With the heavy clay component in a lot of our Nebraska soils, it's also important to watch for compacting the side of the planting hole while you're digging. The shovel itself can oftentimes glaze the side of the planting hole, creating sort of a, a fish bowl that water will sit in and it'll be difficult for roots to penetrate. So be sure to rough up the side of the planting hole if it seems to be that that's going on. This is much more of a problem in urban planting situations, but when trees aren't given enough soil in which to grow, uh, stem girdling roots can often develop. A really extreme example you can see there on the left hand side, where the uh, concrete had been removed from around a street tree and uh, the, the root system that developed from that uh, limited soil volume is uh, apparent. This is obviously going to be a problem for the tree in the long run and not going to be a positive uh, factor in the tree's long-term health. The single largest contributing factor to trees developing stem girdling roots is without a doubt poor nursery practices and trees that are left in containers too long and, and become pot bound. It requires time and money to continue to move a tree into a new size container at the appropriate timing and every corner that's cut along the way gives the tree another chance to possibly develop roots that are that are going to uh, eventually strangle itself. You can see the picture on the left how the roots are already developing in the shape of the container and while there are a number of new methods out no single uh, container is a silver bullet for the problem the proper practices involved from the beginning of that tree being grown to the time it's of sellable size it has the biggest determining factor in, in having trees having good or poor root quality. It's important that we work to reverse the perception amongst the public that an inexpensive but large tree is the best choice. When we have trees that have more healthy root systems and a better balance of roots to shoots, we're going to have more successful, healthy, and long-lived community forests. If this tree were still in the ground, it would be easy for anyone to imagine how difficult it would be for this tree to have a good chance of living in the long term. The roots that are growing around either side of the base of the trunk are going to want to continue to get thicker at the same time that the trunk does. What this will do is disrupt the flow of nutrients down to the roots and moisture up from the roots to the canopy. 
SGRs also have structural implications for our trees, even when they seem perfectly healthy. When we have strong straight line winds that cause a lot of horizontal force on the tree, when there's a stem girdling root, there's a real weak point right at the ground level, which is often why you see trees that snap off at the base. This is the hole that remained after the tree in the previous picture fell over. And the bowl shape that you can see that's left behind is indicative of how that stem girdling root was constricting the base of the tree. Purchasing bare root trees isn't as popular as it once was, but is a method that should be considered more often for a tree to purchase and plant right in your yard. The time of year that you plant bare root trees is critical, as well as keeping those roots hydrated and, and moist uh, in between when you receive the tree and you put it in the ground. If these circular growing roots aren't teased free and allowed to grow in a direction away from the trunk of the tree, then that's where the stem girdling root develops. What you see on the right side is a different production method where there are holes and ridges in the pot that allow somewhere for the root to escape the pot and eventually be pruned naturally. When the roots are pruned in their own way, then they branch and develop into a fibrous root system that's much more resilient to drought stress and that transplant shock that's always so um, well shocking for trees. The main reason that we're seeing so many stem girdling roots developing in nursery trees now is because a large part of their life prior to you purchasing the tree they're in a container that's got an impervious wall to it. When the roots grow out radially from the root system and then hit that wall they have to either grow down or in a circular fashion in uh, contortion to the shape of the pot. Pictured here is a tree that's been produced in a root maker bag which consists of a, a mesh bag with holes of a very specific size. As the roots grow through these holes eventually they're constricted and uh, disrupt the, the movement of carbohydrates out to the roots outside the bag to minimize how much energy the tree loses when it's dug out of the ground. In order for nurseries to be able to sell trees throughout the growing season and still minimize stem girdling root potential, they can use root trapper bags, which are a felt bag with a white outside to reflect heat and light and conserve moisture. The interior is very similar to landscape fabric. It's a fibrous fabric that uh, traps the root as, it, as the name implies and prevents it from hitting the edge of that and growing in a circle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, trees can be left in these uh, bags too long and develop similar problems. So ultimately, the, the close attention of the nursery worker is key for these systems to work properly. And here we have a tree grown in, in that root trapper bag that's having the bag removed and exposing the beautiful root system inside. We don't have an excessive quantity of roots. Any that are growing in a circular fashion, we can easily move and get growing in a better direction. This is the future for trees and what we're hoping to see more and more of being planted in communities and homes and acreages around the country. There are many symptoms of a stem girdling root, but no real definitive ones unless you're able to actually excavate the soil away and find the root that might be causing the problem. Generally, I like to use that black sheep look as a good example of a tree that might have a stem girdling root. If you have a number of trees that were all planted around the same time, they're of the same species, and one or two just don't seem to be doing as well, it's possible that you have some sort of a root defect or some sort of a problem in the soil at least. So those are the sort of differences to watch for. The main thing to keep in mind in terms of cutting away a stem girdling root is, is just that a stem girdling root, if given enough time, can kill a tree. And so you have to weigh the, uh, the pros and cons of removing a large root versus the long-term uh, implications for that stem girdling root in the future. And whenever in doubt, always consult uh, a certified arborist with either the Nebraska Arborist Association or the Midwest chapter of the International Society of Arboriculture. Thanks for listening.